AMD just launched two new big Navi GPUs today, powered by their RDNA 2 architecture. The Radeon RX 6800, which I have on a test bed right behind me, and the RX 6800 XT. At the time of filming, these cards are the closest competitors to Nvidia's Ampere-based RTX 3070 and RTX 3080, respectively. This is a huge launch for AMD, and an exciting one for us, because it's the first time in years that we've seen Team Red compete with Nvidia in the high-end desktop GPU market. The last gen Radeon RX 5000 series offered a solid value to gamers, but the raw performance fell woefully short of NVIDIA's top-tier Turing-based GPUs like the RTX 2080 Ti. There's also a handful of new technologies and features debuting on the RX 6000 series, like Radeon Anti-Lag, support for DirectX 12 Ultimate, and more, but today we're going to be focusing specifically on the RX 6800 XT's gaming performance and how it stacks up against the blazing fast RTX 3080. Stay tuned for our dedicated video on the RX 6800 coming soon. Today's video is brought to you by Slick Deals and their super awesome browser extension. Not only is the extension completely free, guys, but it automatically finds you the best deals on your favorite retail sites to save you the most money possible. And all the deals that it shows you are actually curated by the Slick Deals community, so you only see offers that have been upvoted by other shoppers like you. You go to a retailer's website, click the Slick Deals icon, and bam, you're in Deal City. Population deals. I didn't really know what to expect the very first time I used it, but literally within seconds, I was finding all kinds of offers. Like there was a B550 motherboard for 30% off or something like that, where I was like, I, okay, I don't need that, but that's a really good deal. The extension also automatically adds any site-wide promo codes or coupons at checkout, and it lets you create deal alerts with email and mobile push notifications. I mean, with Black Friday and the holidays right around the corner, this is like the perfect tool to catch all the deals without doing any of the legwork. About 20 million people will be using Slick Deals to help them save money while shopping. So again, it's completely free and saves you money on stuff like computer hardware. Need I continue? If you like saving money, which is a dumb thing to say because who doesn't, click on the link in the description below to start using the Slick Deals browser extension today. Now, before we roll out the benchmarks, it's worth taking a closer look at the RX 6800 XT itself, because it's nothing like any of AMD's previous in-house designs. For starters, the awful blower fan has been replaced by a triple fan design that's spread across a large matte black heatsink. The two-tone shroud feels really well-built and leaves the sides of the heatsink exposed. Since there's no ventilation at the rear of the card, all of its heat will be ejected inside your case, so plan your build accordingly. At the front, there's a backlit Radeon logo, red accent trim, and a pair of standard eight-pin power connectors. The metallic backplate is sleek and sturdy, and the rear I.O. includes two DisplayPort 1.4a ports, one HDMI 2.1b port, and a USB Type-C port. AMD keeps the card down to a two-slot design measuring 10.5 inches or 267 millimeters long, which should fit inside a wide variety of chassis. Now, in recent videos, I've said that the RTX 3080 Founders Edition was the nicest video card NVIDIA has ever made, and now I get to say the same thing about the 6800 XT and AMD. This card looks and feels like the premium product that it is. And while I wish they would finally ditch the red accents, I'm super impressed by the overall build quality and design. Here's a quick look at the spec chart of the two cards side by side. Both sport a PCIe Gen 4 interface, and the RTX 3080 packs significantly more GPU cores here, while the 6800 XT ships with a much higher boost clock and 60% more VRAM, albeit with less memory bandwidth at its disposal than the Ampere GPU. The cards share a similar TDP and pricing, with the 6800 XT being 50 bucks cheaper than the RTX 3080 Founders Edition. I tested both GPUs stock on an open-air testbed with an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X on an Aorus X570 Master with 16 gigs of G-Skill DDR4 3600 speed. Now, with the arrival of the RX 6000 family, AMD has introduced a new feature called Smart Access Memory, or as I'm calling it, SAM. SAM utilizes more PCIe bandwidth so the GPU's video memory can be accessed more efficiently by new Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, so long as they're socketed in a 500 series motherboard. This can potentially lead to slightly increased gaming performance. I tested the 6800 XT both with and without SAM enabled, but the benchmarks slides you're about to see only show results with SAM disabled to give you guys a baseline of what users can expect out of these cards regardless of their platform. After we discuss those slides, I will show you the results I found with SAM enabled to see how much of a difference this new feature actually makes. AMD has also introduced Rage Mode for select RX 6000 series GPUs like the 6800 XT. Rage Mode is basically a one-click overclock that increases power and fan speed limits to achieve higher core clock speeds and boost performance. But like I said, I'm testing both GPUs stock today, so we're holding off on enabling Rage Mode for now. 
When testing power consumption in the Division 2 benchmark at 4K, the max full system power draw with the 6800 XT was 490 watts, compared to the RTX 3080 system pulling 537 watts, or about a 10% increase in peak wattage. The recommended power supply for both GPUs is 750 watts. GPU core clock speed was measured once the cards were heat soaked after a 15 minute run in Unigen Heaven 4.0, where the 6800 XT reported a blistering 2302 megahertz. Of course, there's a lot more to GPU performance than core frequency, but hot damn is that fast. Comparatively speaking, the RTX 3080 averaged 1890 megahertz. While it has a higher core clock speed, the 6800 XT seemed to run slightly warmer than the 3080, hitting a maximum temperature of 78 degrees Celsius. Now, as a reminder, this was conducted on an open air test bed where components typically stay a bit cooler than they do inside of a closed chassis. So you'll need excellent airflow in your case to keep either of these cards from getting too hot. When it comes to noise, both cards run surprisingly quiet under load, showing just how far AMD and Nvidia have come with their in-house designs. You won't find any noise complaints with either option, but the 6800 XT is definitely the quieter card by a long shot. And now it's time to pit these GPUs head to head in a series of synthetic and real world gaming tests. All game titles were tested at 2560 by 1440 and 3840 by 2160. I have omitted 1080p results to keep CPU bottlenecking from skewing our results. And because most people dropping this kind of money on a card will be gaming at higher resolutions. Make sure you stay tuned for after the benchmarks where we will discuss what it all means and ultimately which GPU you should buy, which May not even matter since you probably can't buy either of them anyway right now, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Here are the benchmarks. All right, combining our average frame rates across seven game titles, this is how the cards stack up at 1440p. The RTX 3080 rendered about 6% more frames on average. Nothing to write home about, but it is measurable and it positions Nvidia ahead of its competitor. The results are similar at 2160p with the RTX 3080 outperforming the 6800 XT by about six and a half percent. Woohoo! As the data shows, the RTX 3080 is typically a bit faster than the 6800 XT, but it's also a bit more expensive, making the value proposition of these cards extremely competitive. Whether you're gaming at 1440p or 2160p, these GPUs offer almost the exact same number of frames per dollar, assuming you were to buy them at MSRP. That begs the question, is it worth paying about 7.5% more for the RTX 3080 to get roughly 6.5% more performance? It's a tough call. And I don't think there's one right answer. Some people would rather save 50 bucks and others would rather have the slight performance buff. So it's really a matter of personal choice. But wait, does AMD's smart access memory change any of this? I mean, if you're putting a Zen 3 chip and a 500 series motherboard in your system, is the performance uplift with SAM enabled enough to secure the 6800 XT's victory? Not, not really. In my testing, enabling SAM had zero effect most of the time, and when it did, it yielded modest single-digit gains. There's bound to be additional titles like Dirt 5 that benefit more from this feature, and while free performance is always nice, smart access memory isn't necessarily something I would give a large amount of weight to in my purchasing decision based on what I'm seeing here. So what do we do, Kyle? With 6800 XT or RTX 3080, how does one choose? Well, if you need a GPU ASAP, buy whichever one you can find. <laughs> 
because the RTX 3080 is still pretty much sold out everywhere. And as I'm filming this, I have no idea what supply of the RX 6000 series will look like. So from an immediate and realistic standpoint, buy the card that's available first. Because in terms of raw performance, the RTX 3080 doesn't have a big enough lead to justify waiting for it if you can get your hands on the 6800 XT now. Hypothetically speaking, in a perfect world where both GPUs are in healthy supply, wouldn't that be nice? I would personally opt for the RTX 3080 because I personally find the extra bit of performance to be worth the $50 premium, and especially at 4K. That extra 6% of performance could be what keeps your game from dipping below 60 FPS. Just saying. That said, I would not blame someone at all for choosing the 6800 XT. It offers a tremendous bang for the buck, and it's the fastest gaming GPU AMD has ever released. That is, of course, until they drop the $1,000 RX 6900 XT come December 8th, which should make for an exciting showdown against the RTX 3090. But that's all I got for now, guys. Don't forget to massacre that like button until it turns blue and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our matchup between the RX 6800 and the RTX 3070. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one, and I will see y'all in the next video.